Hi friends, I had some um, requests for doing engraving file tutorials, so I'm going to share with you how I made this really cute Valentine's backer. So I started in Procreate and just did a variety of Valentine's doodles. Um, I started with a canvas that was 3600 by 3600 pixels and I just filled it with all of my little doodle designs. So I have an arrow heart, I have candy hearts, um, flowers, love letters, all the things that I could think of for Valentine's Day. Um, and then once I had drawn everything I thought of, I just kind of duplicated those shapes, moved them around, and really just worked on creating the design that I thought was aesthetically pleasing. Um, so I'm not going to talk through the whole thing, and feel free to skip ahead if you don't want to watch this part. Um, but here is just the little time lapse for how I made the um, doodle design part of the pattern. And just a few notes. Um, I used the monoline brush under calligraphy, and I want to say that my brush size varied from like 2% to like 8% depending on what I was working on um, and since it's an engraving file the brush thickness doesn't matter too much it's just going to be how thick your design looks when it's engraved um, but so here is the time lapse and if you're not interested just go ahead and skip ahead
One thing to note is this is not a continuous pattern. Um, so basically, it's not repeating. You couldn't put the squares next to each other and have it just repeat over and over. Um, there's a different way to do that. And while I think those are a lot of fun, that's not what I was going for here. Um, so here, I'm, I am having the design carry over the edges just because I have no intention of having it be a repeating design um, because it's going to just fit with those backer shapes and then that's going to be enough. Um, but in the future, if anyone's interested, I might do a tutorial on how how to do a repeated design leave a comment below if that's something you're interested in um, but so basically I'm just finishing putting all of my doodles around this making it nice and full and then I'm going to export it with a transparent background and import it into Inkscape so here I am opening up my PNG file um, to switch from my iPad to my computer I use Google Photos and I just sync everything um, and I really like being able to do that. But so this is what the PNG looks like when you import it to Inkscape and um, you right click and do trace bitmap. And because it's all one color and you don't have to worry about multiple colors or different thresholds or anything, you can just use the regular um, default settings. So it's this brightness cutoff. And if you do update, it shows you a preview. And then if you like the way that looks, you can hit OK or you can adjust um, the threshold and continue to update that preview until you find something that you are satisfied with. So here I'm just showing a few different examples. Um, if you go all the way up to one, it turns black. So I'm going to go with what it had originally, the 0 0.450, and I'm going to hit OK. So that traced my shape, and I moved that over, and you can see all those nodes when I double click. That's how you know it's a vector shape. Um, and then I'm going to delete the regular, the PNG that I had imported originally. So here is my um, newly vectored design. And so what I'm going to do is um, put this on a few different backers so that I can have it engrave on whatever cut shape I want for the laser. Um, and it, it, it's going to turn out really cool and you, you can use it for a lot of different projects. So this is the same process as if you're making a cut file. Um, if you were doing that, you would turn off the fill and then change it to a red cut line. We're not making this a cut file, but just to show you what it would look like if it was. Um, but what we're doing is an engraving file. So for the Glowforge, you want your engraving to be a fill. That's how it recognizes it for the laser. So I always make my fills purple and you turn off the cut line because nothing is being cut here. And, um, it just shows that everything that is purple is going to engrave in your design. So here I'm just changing um, the size of it to 10 inches and I'm going to make a heart shape um, and that's going to be the cut line. So the way I'm doing that is I made two circles and then I'm just going to use my pen tool and create um, like that little V shape for the bottom of the heart. But I have to make sure that at um, the connecting points that it overlaps with those circles so that when I go to do path union in a little bit, once I have my shape, how I want it to look, um, that everything welds together smoothly. I know different programs have different terminology for that, um, but it is the union function in Inkscape. So I'm just going to speed this part up just a little bit so that you don't have to um, listen to me <laughs> talk about adjusting every single node in the heart. Um, but the good thing about working in a vector program is that there are these nodes that you can adjust the shape. Um, and the second little cursor on that left hand side is how you do that so you either double click and then you can click on each node and adjust it um, or you can start by clicking on that second icon the second cursor and then going into the nodes So now that this is the shape that I want, um, I can select all three of those parts, do path union, and then it becomes one solid shape and I can turn it into a cut line. Um, I noticed that after I did that, there was one rogue node here <laughs> um, that I just needed to adjust a little bit. And then it turned out to be a really cute heart shape um, that I will be using to make my backer for my design. Um, and then I'm just gonna show you how to overlay the engraving part um, and make sure that it matches up to that shape.
So from here, you're going to move your outline over top of your design and just make sure that there are no places where the design um, has any empty areas on the outside. So you want to line it up and make sure that it fits okay. Um, and then I learned really quickly <laughs> that you have to actually duplicate the cut line. Otherwise, it gets rid of it and you have to recreate it. Um, so this is what it would look like if I had just done the process without duplicating the cut line. Um, so here I'm copying and pasting another one off to the side. Um, and then I'm going to do path intersection and um, get my doodle pattern in that shape. So I did path intersection and you see how it turned to the heart shape for the purple doodles. Then I can just place the cut line back on top of it, line it up and make sure those edges match so that there's no um, gaps there. And then you have your cut line in the shape you needed. So I'm gonna show you one more version. Um, and I had drawn this arrow heart um, as part of my bunny interchangeable file. But so I did path break apart and got that center piece. And um, I am going to duplicate that center piece so you can do control Control C, Control V, or you can do right click, copy, paste, however that works for you, um, and just put that back inside the arrow heart. And then I'm going to do the same process um, once I have that lined back up. I realized that centering it didn't work because of the arrow portion. Um, but then I'm just going to select the um, cut line and the engraving background and do intersection. And it's going to um, cut it into that shape so I can line it up inside my cut lines. And then I have a really cute um, doodle background for that piece of my cut file. Um, so you just save this as an SVG file and you can import it into um, the Glowforge interface. So um, I'm just moving it back to the top top of the um, cut area that I made to match my Glowforge cut bed. And then here is just the engraving process. So I used a thousand speed, 60 power, and 195 lines per inch. And this is like super sped up. Um, I wish it could engrave this fast, but here is the process and what it looks like when you actually engrave that design onto your backer. And then here um, you can see it cutting out the um, outline part of that arrow heart and then the inner heart where that backer is. And I also cut a second version um, just to go behind it so that you can glue your layer onto it and it'll stay as one solid piece. Um, but that way you can spray paint the outline and then you can paint the inside however um, you see fit. So here I'm just painting with a bunch of different markers I had lying around. Um, I think it's really cute and it reminds me of like, you know, doodles on a composition notebook kind of thing. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I finished this piece. Um, and yeah, if you enjoy the time lapse, you can keep watching. Otherwise, you can skip ahead to the final pictures. The reason I did the um, backer part separate from the outline is so that I could spray paint that outline and have it come out really clean. But the really fun part about this technique is that you can take your single doodle drawing like this one here and apply it to a variety of different shapes and sizes and make a whole bunch of different looking pieces. 
Um, here's a St. Patrick's Day version that I did. Um, I also have a baby shower version. Um, it says, Oh Baby, and has a bunch of different little baby themed doodles, um, which are really cute. And you can see there's gift tag shapes, there's signs, there's decorations. These would be adorable Easter basket tags. Um, there are so many different possibilities with this technique, which is why I think it's so cool um, to be able to play around and make your own engraving files for the laser. I hope that this video was helpful to you and um, I can't wait to see what type of engraving files you make. If you enjoyed watching, please give me a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel um, to see what future projects um, we can work on together. Bye!